Hi, in this lecture, we will be placing a dartboard on the wall at the position of placement indicator by tapping on the screen. In the last lectures, we have created a script place object on plane and our build is working fine on the device. But when we click on a play button to test the project in Unity editor, in the editor, it throws exception at line 41. Let's take a look at this issue, how we can resolve it. Go to line 41. At this line, we are getting the center point of the screen for the ray casting using camera.grunt.viewport to screen point. So I think our main issue is camera.grunt. Uh, we can also use camera.main to point the main camera. Camera.grunt is the camera we are currently rendering with for low level rendering control only. Most of the time we want to use camera.main instead. We only use camera.grunt when we are implementing one of the following events like mono behavior on render image, mono behavior dot on pre render, or on post render. So, to resolve this issue, we can use camera.main. Now you can see we have a zero exception in the editor as well. Okay, now just come back to our original lecture. For the dartboard 3D model, the first option is we can create a dartboard model using a placeholder in Unity editor. For the dartboard placeholder, I have used a cylinder model. As it's a closest object we can use, now we need to give this cylinder the closest shape to the dartboard. Here I'm resetting the position to zero and we will decrease the scale as well. Scaling X and Z to 0.5. And scaling roughly Y at 0.02. Now for the text, we will add a text mesh pro, go to 3D object and click on text mesh pro. In the text simply, we will write a dartboard. The default text size is too big for the AR. Let's make it balance. And we will be renaming text to dartboard text. And for the cylinder, we will just simply write a dartboard. And now we will just quickly try to adjust the size on the dartboard. After getting the right size of the text, we will make a child of dartboard. Yeah, it's getting better, but you can go into further detail to match the actual dartboard. As a placeholder, it's enough for now. Let's make it a child of dartboard. We will drag the dartboard text into dart to make a child game object of dartboard. And now drag the dartboard object to the project view to make it a prefab. As for the text, we have used Text Mesh Pro. At this point, it's important to note there are two type of Text Mesh Pro. First is placed inside 3D object. Here, Text Mesh Pro. And second is in the UI. Here, Text Mesh Pro. The Text Mesh Pro placed in 3D object is designed with the mesh renderer. This component should be used when not using the canvas system. And the Text Mesh Pro placed in the UI is designed to work with the canvas. The text component only works with the canvas. And the second option for your Dartboard 3D model is you can create your custom 3D model using a 3D modeling software. The one is available for free is Blender. I have also made all the 3D assets used in this course using the Blender. And the third and easy option is I have already created a 3D model of Dartboard. You can use that model. You can find the Dartboard 3D model inside the Unity custom package. I have attached the custom package with this lecture. You can download it and import inside your project. For the dartboard, you can use as a simple cube, or you can download and import the custom package attached to this lecture. In this package, we have a 3D model and a prefab, and we also use the Text Mesh Pro for numbering. Go to the prefab and click on the dartboard prefab. And this is how it looks. And now you drop this prefab to the scene. Now click on Import TMP Essential. TMP is basically Text Mesh Pro. We have used this text mesh pro for the numbers around the dartboard. Okay, in my case, we have an issue. 
I think we need to refresh the reference to the TX Mesh Pro. Let's figure it out. Open this prefab and click on any text that is used in this start board and go to the shaders. And I think we should change the shader to something else. Okay, under Text Mesh Pro, let's try Distance Field. Yeah, I think it's working. We need to delete this and re import the prefab. And let's see, does it work or not? Yeah, that's okay. Now it's working. Great. Now we need to assign this dartboard prefab to place object on plane. Let's take a look at the basic structure of dartboard prefab. Parent object have only transform component and its scale at 2. And this child object is actual 3D model. For this particular model and prefab, we have corrected the rotation y at 180 to place our object in the right direction. I have created this model in a detail. Each and every part of this model is a separate object. And for the numbering, I have used Text Mesh Pro. Having a each separate object can help us to know where the exact dart is hit. In future, we can add the collider on all sections. And using on trigger and trigger methods, we can know where the dart exactly hits. We will discuss this in the next lectures. Create a new game object for dartboard. Object to place is a game object type. From the Unity editor, we will assign our dartboard prefab to this game object. So when the user will click on the screen, we will instantiate this model on the wall. In the update method at line 29, we will create a if condition to check place position is valid. That means, is there a valid surface detection point is available to instantiate our prefab. And in the second and third parameter, we are checking do we have a valid touch by the user on the screen. If player meets all the conditions at line 31, we are calling a place object method. Next, we will create a place object method. In this method, we will instantiate object to place game object. That is our prefab of dartboard. This function makes a copy of game object in a similar way to the duplicate command in the editor. If you are cloning a game object, you can specify its position and rotation. In the first parameter of the instantiate method, we are passing a game object to create or clone. In the second parameter, we are passing the position of the object where exactly our object will be placed. As we are passing a placement pose dot position, this is the position of the point in the real world detected by the AR. And in the third parameter, we are passing the rotation. Here at this point, it's important to understand if we are detecting a surface on a smooth wall with a good lighting condition, we can have an accurate results of position and rotation. It might be possible in some conditions, we shouldn't have an accurate position and rotation. So it's possible sometimes we get the wrong object rotation. Technically, it's how the AR detected in the real world. Instantiate method is used to create a game object. I will share the link with this lecture to study more about it. Now assign the dartboard prefab. Now let's create a build and from the build we are expecting that when we will be tap on the screen, it will create a dartboard where our placement indicator is pointing. Okay, cool. It's working fine. But the thing is, now we will tap, it will create one more dartboard. Again tap, it will create one more dartboard. Thank you for watching. I see you in the next.